What's up guys? My name's Gamer360 Sports, welcoming all of you to the start of the All Sim Rebuild series here on MLB 13 The Show. Now those of you thinking this might be a clone of the Astros franchise, it is not. Because let me tell you, if you've seen my previous All Sim franchise on NBA 2K13 with the Sacramento Kings, you guys already know this series is pretty different than the usual franchise. Because in this series... We are not just usually just playing the games, making a couple moves here and there, and slowly moving on. No, in this series, we are doing every single move, live commentary, and watching the CPU play the games. We're not interfering in any single way. We are playing as the GM, not the user having fun, the GM. We're going straight from the GM chair to the broadcast booth and everything. With this series, it's going to be different than on NBA 2K13. On 2K13, I simulated, just did a couple moves here and there, and then showed you the game. This, I'm going to be doing a lot of commentary in every couple months. We're going to feature one series in this game. For example, you can see a spring train. Let's say you want to feature a series right now with the, the Baltimore Orioles. You'd see all three games of that series shown in one episode at the end of this video as if it was sports center or the school or anything like that so anyway before we continue we can't do many moves just yet because it's the start of the season and in my opinion you can't trade anyone that major in the first month of the season my rule is do not trade in the first month which means no trades in april you won't see crazy moves you'll see probably Moves that make sense for the Minnesota Twins, where we try and get prospects and try and wheel and deal and try and get rid of fat contracts that we do not need at certain points of the season. You can tell right now our budget is $58.5 million, which is not that much. As a matter of fact, I think the Astros in this game have a higher budget than the Minnesota Twins. But right now you can tell Minnesota has a lot of things to do. Because at this point, Minnesota has barely anyone on this team. Let me show you the roster. Our best players right now are Willingham, Mauer, and Justin Morneau. The rest of the players, you can basically scratch off. We have Glenn Perkins as closer, 90 overall, 29 years old though, at 8 potential. Then we have Vance Worley, our big signee in the offseason this year, 25 years old, 84 overall as our best pitcher. Then you have a ton of prospects on the Minnesota Twins starting in this season because with the Operation Sports rosters, you can tell, looking at starting pitchers, your best pitchers are Worley, Devery, sorry about that, Devery's, Healthy, Diamond, Carrera, and then you go down the list and you see not that good players. We have a top 50 prospect in pitching, 66 overall, 20 years old, a potential in John Ryan. But right now at this point, our roster is pretty complex overall. Now before we go on and skip spring training, because in my opinion, spring training is useless in this kind of series. We have to do the train assignments. I explained this in the Astros franchise. Let me explain this once again if you do not watch that. Let me tell you right now, if you do not set every single one of these training aspects, every single spring train, you will have a broken progression system in your entire franchise. Which means, if you have a guy that's 32 years old, he'll progress double the speed downward. For example, you've seen in guys like Straight Up Boston's franchises and that kind of stuff, where in his Cubs franchise, Derek Jeter is a free agent at 35 years old, 62 overall. Do you want this to happen to the Minnesota Twins? No, you do not. Because right now, the Minnesota Twins are in a rebuilding stage. Even though they have a couple pieces in real life and in this game, they are not ready to win the World Series just yet. Yeah, I just started rambling on this point, so let's skip ahead to this part, which is important. So anyway... Probably I'm going to skip through this because right now the key thing is not to bore you guys. I don't want 16 minute episodes of live commentaries talking about this then 4 or 5 minutes of gameplay. No, I want this to go as fast as possible. So I'm going to skip ahead until I'm all set for the start of the regular season.
And just on a little side note, you can tell right now our rotation is pretty messed up in this game because let me tell you, you're looking at a ton of starting pitchers in the bullpen for no reason. They're not supposed to be in the bullpen and they're not supposed to be in the majors. The max starters I can have is six and that's the max I had. Looking at relievers, you'll only see three relievers just before I switched all this stuff. That's a little side note, now let's go back to the live commentary. Alright, I finally finished all the changes I want to make for the Minnesota Twins before we start off this season. The bullpen was a disaster because of the show, because let me tell you, because the ratings are so low for the Minnesota Twins, you can tell right now there's a ton of starting pitchers. You can see all the starting pitchers on your screen, we had at this point eight of them called up in the bullpen and only three relievers so basically i had to put some relievers in the bullpen call up about three or four of them in Rodrique, burnett and swarzak and call back down vasquez and hendrix because this was completely messed up you only had burton you only had finn and you only had dorsing all up in the majors at reliever but anyway, I did a few hour changes here and there in the lineups. I switched Minestroni and Carroll from the 1 and 2 spots for the right hand side. Mornal and Willingham I switched around as well because I noticed that Mornal's hitting stats are better than Willingham's on the right side. And also on the left side, I did a bunch of big moves because I moved Willingham into the 3 spot over Mornal because you can tell he only has 69 contact and 30 power on the left side. And you can tell Willingham has 51 contact and 97 power. I trust Willingham at the three spot, hitting home runs on the top of the lineup more than Joe Maurer because Joe Maurer might not be able to hit the ball on the left side in this lineup. And I also did a couple other switches down here in the DH. Ryan Dorman is in the DH AO role. I moved him into the seventh spot instead of the eighth spot because I wanted to go like right, 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 left, right, left, switch, left, right, and try and mix things up at the terms of the hitting and the pitching going on. And also, you can see I did the exact same thing for no DH. But anyway, the new system in this game for scouting is that it's pretty easy because scouting, let me just switch over to the players. These players are already determined by the scouting to be good. For example, Robbie Kojima, a starting pitcher from the West, 93 potential right now, and this guy is a 70 overall. So he's a first rounder, could be up by the next season. So this guy can go up to the high 90s most likely in overall. And now let's go and set our usual stuff for our scouting. Most of these people unfortunately are from the central, which means since we want to be done by at least Christmas, let me summarize what I basically said. All I was explaining was the new system for scouting over and over again, just with the simple examples. But let me tell you, it's pretty simple. You basically already know this stuff. And now we're just going to start simulating for the season. Our first series was on Monday, April 1st, which I made a huge mistake saying the Astros game was on Easter Monday. Not the best thing because I messed up the date in that series. I corrected it afterwards. But anyway... We're going to simulate in these featured series for this episode as I'm looking through this will possibly be right now the Atlanta Braves in May. I'm doing the first two months of the season because episode two, we're jumping right into the draft on Friday, June 7th. Now anyway, let's start simulating right now. This could be interesting. Vince Worley versus Justin Verlander. This will not go well, I can already tell. Let's start simulating off here. And I already know I am not doing any trades to store off the season auto, auto. You can tell right now we have to do a bunch of autos. We got a ton of injuries on top of that because right now our roster is up and down. We still got a win against Detroit and a win against Kansas City. Two wins against Kansas City. But right now we are not doing the best at this point. Because you can tell Vance Worley is our best pitcher. And in his first two starts, he won both of his starts so far this season. 
This kind of sounds like backyard baseball, doesn't it? But anyway, at this point, you can tell the first month of the season was not that good. I rambled on yet again. And during the first month of the season, we only won five games, finishing off the month 5-21. and 21. But anyway, as we go into May, you can tell we're starting to turn things around. But Carrera finally gets his first win. We're only is 0-4 right now. So I'm surprised we actually got the win against Detroit in the first game. He didn't even get credited for the win. And we're starting to turn things around this month. But right now, I'm just going to simulate up until the Atlanta Braves series. So I'm going to cut out for the actual commentary. See you guys with the highlights in 3, 2, 1. The Minnesota Twins are having a red-hot start to the month of May so far this season as they're 18-25 and and on a six-game winning streak. And to start off, Joe Mauer would cream this ball to right field to start off the game 2-0 Twins early. And this continued as Joel Benjamin struggled in the first inning. He allows a single down the left field line to make it 3-0 early. But Joel Benjamin would settle down to end off the first inning as he strikes out Clyde Thomas on the swing and a miss to end off the first inning. Now on the mound for the Minnesota Twins was Mike Pelfrey, 1-4, 5.52 ERA, which means he is not the best pitcher and he showed it early. In the first inning, a crazy pitch goes to the backstop and allows the first run of the game for the Braves to make it 3-1 on the wild pitch. Meanwhile, Joel Benjamin went into cruise control as he was strikeout Joe Mauer looking to end off the top of the second. Now on the bottom of the second, Pelfrey was a different story. He struggled in this inning as he allows a single down the left field line going right through the third baseman to make it 3-2. And Joel Benjamin, still in cruise control, forces a ground ball to end the inning with man on first and third to the first baseman. Now the bottom of the fifth inning, the Braves were trying to get on base and it was Pelfrey who went into cruise control. He strikes out Jason Hayward on that pitch and then another pitch going to be a ground ball with the men going home. It ends off the inning going to Justin Morneau on the ground ball. Now at the top of the eighth inning, Joe Mauer on base. Relievers are trying to seal the game for the Braves and try and get him in this. But it's a diving catch, an amazing catch by Reed Johnson in the outfield. Oh man, that is one great catch. But as this game continued, the Atlanta Braves will field off that catch as they would bunt the ball and bring a man home to tie it up at three in the eighth inning. And then it sets up a wild finish in extras. Now a ball slapped hard the opposite way. That's in there, base hit. And the winning run is across to score. And the Atlanta Braves win off the momentum of Reed Johnson on the walk-off hit. Now going into game two of this series, it was a different story as Chris Medwin was on the mound for the Atlanta Braves who was 5-1, 2.48 ERA and 37 strikeouts. But to start off this game, he was looking a bit shaky. After retiring the first two batters, he plucks Joe Maurer in the right leg. Are you kidding me? Just take your base. Nothing happened after that hit. But continuing on, Dan Ugla would hit this ball to left center field to bring in a two-run shot to make it 2 nothing Braves already. And continuing on, still in the first inning, this would be an error at third base and it brings in run number three. Just like how the Twins had a three-run start to the game, so do the Braves in game two. Now the Twins would have their first run of the game on that single in between the shortstop and the third baseman in the second inning. But Medlin would get out of it as he forces a ground ball to the first baseman as Medlin would get the put out himself. Now top of the third inning, it'll be cruising as Medlin. He strikes out wooing him on that high pitch. And then meanwhile, the pitcher on the mound, Carrera for the Twins, was struggling. This crazy pitch almost hits the batter in the batter's box. And Simmons would pay him back as this will be a single to center field to bring in the run to make it 4-1. to 
And this continued as this game was in cruise control for the Atlanta Braves. With one man on at second base in the bottom of the six, it is going to be a huge shot going to right center field to be a two-run home run. That's all the Braves would need as they would end up winning game two of the series six to one thanks to Jordan Schieffer's home run. Now going into game three of the series, this was the afternoon game for the Atlanta Braves and the Minnesota Twins. On the mound was Brandon Beachy, who was kind of struggling to start off this season with the 3.19 ERA. And to start off, Beachy would strike out rolling him with a man on to end off the first inning. Meanwhile, Vance Worley was on the mound for the Minnesota Twins, and even though he has 41 strikeouts and 17 walks on the season, he can't get run support and he can't get wins as he strikes out Jason Hayward to start off this game. Now, top of the second, he, it would continue to be a pitcher's duel as Pook would strike out. He struggled in this series, having 11 home runs so far this season. Now, with the bases loaded in the third inning, this would fly out all the way to right field in foul territory as this would get Beachy out of the situation. Now bottom fourth, it will be Dan Ugler again, this time creaming the ball again to right center field. A two run shot to give the Braves a three nothing lead after a home run just a couple batters ago. Now bottom of the eighth, the Braves continue as this will be another home run to left field for Justin Upton and the Minnesota Twins struggled, but Atlanta did not need any of these runs as Beachy would go on a complete game shutout, finishing it off with a flyout to right field as the Braves win the series 3-0, win the game 5-0 and go on a four game winning streak going one game above 500. Now this one, I'll wrap up this episode of the All-Sim franchise with the Minnesota Twins. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and enjoyed the highlights from our featured series of the episode. Now thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.